Good morning. Good, morning. Uh, good to see all your smiling faces. I know every one of you is smiling underneath those masks, so I'm just going to assume that. So it's good to have y'all here on this wonderful, wonderful day. A um, couple things. Uh, Christmas Eve service will be at 6.30 p.m., and it will be down in the Family Life Center. We will be social distancing, so bring all you want. we got plenty of room. Um, but that'll be uh, Christmas Eve, and uh, uh, that'll be at 6.30 p.m. Also, I'm hoping that about mid-January we'll be starting Bible study back. Again, it will be down there, social distancing. So if you're um, ready to uh, get back to Bible study, and uh, uh, you know that we're going to do all we can to make sure everybody's safe, but um, we will be starting that back in January. Are there any other announcements as well? I see a quick hand in the back. Yes. So for outreach ministry, I'm asking the congregation if they, if they are able and would like to provide food. We have a Christmas food basket with one of the table in the back. If you can sign up to bring food for 10 families that we'll, we'll take food to next Sunday. So if you do that, that would be most helpful to sign up today and bring it next Sunday. Thank so you. it's due by next Sunday. If, uh, if there's a food, a list back there, if you didn't hear, um, and you want to bring food for 10 families, um, sign up for what you can bring. Okay. How about anybody else? <clears throat> See Pam, uh, December 29th, and I'm sorry, what's that called again? It's Southern Lights. Southern Lights. Okay, uh, we'll get that in the bulletin next week too. All righty. Again, I accept M&Ms and don't do like one parishioner and put a fake snake in the uh, box. <laughs> I won't name names, Pam. <laughs> so. Yeah, she listened all right. I almost wasn't here this week. <laughs> How about anybody else? Anybody have any announcements? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and uh, we come to worship you. You are the only one 
who is worthy of our worship. And um, as we worship you, we just ask that you would fill our hearts and that you would bring us joy and peace and all the gifts of Christmas. And Lord, we just pray that we will also make you happy. And we, uh, we come to do that today, to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, our call, please stand for our call to worship this morning. God comes, so don't let go of all the reasons to rejoice. We will sing a song of Advent to the one who fills our lives with joy. God comes, so don't stop lifting your prayers with thanksgiving. We will sing a song of Advent to the one who hears our words and sighs. God comes, so don't stop giving your hearts to God. We will sing a song of Advent to the one who graces us with a peace we cannot begin to understand. God comes. We will keep watching for his coming. Amen. We're going to open our song service this morning to Christian Friends Rejoice. Last Sunday, the candle of peace was lit. We light it and the candle of hope again as remember that Christ will come again and bring the world everlasting peace. The third candle of Advent is the candle of joy. It reminds of the joy that Mary felt when the angel Gabriel told her that a special child would be born to her, a child who would save and deliver his people. God wants us all to have joy. The angel who announced to the shepherds that Jesus had been born told them, do not be afraid. I'm bringing you good news of great joy for all people. For you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. We light this candle to remember that Christ brings the promise of a new life, a life in which the blind receive sight, the lame walk, and the prisoners are set free. 
We light it to remember that he is the bringer of true, everlasting joy. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the joy you bring us. Help us prepare our hearts for this gift. Bless our worship. Help us to hear and to do your word. We ask in the name of the one born in Bethlehem. Amen. We have a little addition to your bulletin this morning. <clears throat> for the last three Sundays, Jim has been coming in and he's been humming. Sweet little Jesus boy. So I ask him if you would to share that with us this morning. I got it. Boy in church he is. Is it on? Sweet little Jesus boy. come to that point in our service where we lift up those folks who are in need of our prayers. Um, are there any that you would like to lift up? Don't forget to put them on the prayer card and put that in the bullet or put that in the uh, offering plate if you'd like to uh, have it in the bulletins. Yes, sir. Well, Michelle was diagnosed, I guess, finally with a uh, with a severe case of bronchitis. Um, she was hoping to get up and get to Baker's Chapel today to read the Advent candle, or light the Advent candle, but she didn't, so she must have uh, woke up coughing again real bad. So yes, please keep Michelle in your prayers. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Mike is, okay. Mike is not doing well, so. Huh? Rena? Okay. I like 
us to remember one of Simon, that's my cousin. In Birmingham, she's on a ventilator and in critical condition. Same thing we graduated from high school together. Okay, what was the name again? Wanda Simon. Wanda She's Simon. A cousin. Anybody else? All right, what about Joy's? It's Sunday again. It's Sunday again. We're alive. We're alive. No COVID virus. No COVID virus in here. And we're <laughs> We're meeting, yes, yes. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. It is great. Uh, tell us again, how many did we use, or how many did we um, adopt? 22 kids that you adopted today, uh, this year, so. Can and all 1,492 were adopted. All 14. 1,492 kids. That's, didn't you say triple last year's? Yeah. So thank y'all. Everybody, give yourself a hand. All right. How about anybody else? Give me another joy. Come on, this Sunday is about joy. Give me something. <laughs> uh, it's not really probably a joy to anybody but me and Sissy. But while we were shopping for these children, uh, we let our uh, uncontrolled joy get away from us, and we purchased uh, four shopping baskets full of toys for the Toys for Tots. All right. Well, yeah. good deal. Awesome. 47 presents. Good deal. Awesome. We're I know also, it's a joy for them. Yeah, we're also probably going to have to eat at other people's houses this week. <laughs> <laughs> You, you can come to my house. I, somebody made us some soup. Okay. And I made a big old pot of soup, and I'm not real fond of it. So, yeah, come. I need to get rid of it. <laughs> How about anybody else? Anybody else? All right. Let us prepare our hearts for prayer then. Father God, at this, uh, during this time of year, we uh, come to you and we ask for your joy as we celebrate the Christmas season. We come and uh, lift up our, our praises uh, for you are doing good things in our midst, even in the midst of a, a pretty bad year. You're still there and we thank you for that. We praise your name for um, everything that you do those things that we notice and those that go unnoticed. We thank you that we can shine your light to others um, in all kinds of ways. Uh, so, Lord, we, uh, we just thank you for, for getting us through so that we can be a blessing to others for you. Father, we pray for those who are in need right now. We pray for those who are on our prayer list, those mentioned today, those who are in our communities and our, in our families those who are hurting maybe with physical pain, those who have to be in or go to the hospital, those who are being tested positive for COVID, for those who may be grieving today. Father, we lift them up to you. You know how to heal each and every one. You know everything about all of us. You know what we need. And we thank
thank you for caring for us and caring for those needs. We thank you most especially for your son Jesus who came and was born in Bethlehem, a humble beginning and just something awesome that no one would think of a God doing. But also of dying for our sins. Another thing, wow, it's just, it's just amazing how much you love us. And also that you'll come back. That's, we just look forward to one day when we see you again. And Father, we, we thank you for all that Jesus did and all that he taught us. And one of those things he taught was how to pray. And so we lift our voices together in praying in that way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. <coughs> We're going to continue singing this morning. We're going to sing God Rest You, Mary Jennifer. Don't forget the offering plate is in the back if you'd like to place an offering or your prayer cards. Uh, do that um, on your way out. Let us uh, pray a prayer of thanksgiving over the offering. Heavenly Father, again we come and give thanks. We give you thanks for what you've given us, for all we have comes from you. So Lord, as we give back today, remind us that this is not just something we have to do, but we do it because we love you but also because you love us. It's in Jesus' name we pray.
You know, um, one of the things I like most about the Christmas season are, are the songs that we sing. And uh, they, we're talking about joy today, and these are things that bring me joy. Um, I started to uh, yell encore a while ago. They're not even listening to me. They're over there talking. So um, <laughs> I'm talking about you, by the way. <laughs> I was giving you <laughs> credit. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> All right, uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are, um, we're grateful that we could be here to worship you. And Lord, by far, I am so grateful that you use me. Lord, I pray that what will be said today is what each person needs to hear, and it will be something they hear from you. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, last week, we lit the candle of peace. The week before, it was the candle of hope. And today, it was the candle of joy. Um, these are three. Next week, it'd be love. These are, are the things that are celebrated at Christmas um, that we receive through the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Um, today, like I said, today is joy. And, and joy and, and peace from last week, they're intertwined. You really don't have one without the other. And joy, we must remember, is we can get it confused with happiness at times. And joy is not happiness. Happiness is something that happened that, that depends on circumstances. It's an emotion. You know, and emotions, happiness, anger, sadness, you know, these things come and go depending on what's going on in our lives. But joy can be had in the best of times and in the worst of times. Now, there's a... a, a a guy named D.L. Moody or Dwight Moody, maybe somebody's heard of him. He, was, uh, he lived back in the uh, uh, 19th century, in the 1800s, and it's said that he was the Billy Graham of the 19th century. Some people have said that Billy Graham was the D.L. Moody of the 20th century. In other words, he was a great evangelist, known worldwide. And, and this is something that he said. I want to share this with you today. This is what he said about, about joy. He said, happiness is caused by things that happen around me. And circumstances will mar it. But joy flows right on through trouble. Joy flows on through the dark. Joy flows in the night as well as in the day. Joy flows all through persecution and opposition. It is an unceasing fountain bubbling up in the heart. A secret spring the world can't see and doesn't know anything about. The Lord gives his people perpetual joy when they walk in obedience to him. Now, three things I, I saw in this when I looked at it. Happiness is caused um, by things around us, but joy, joy comes in good and bad times, like I said a while ago. That's the first thing that he said. The second thing he said was that, that the world can't see it. The world doesn't understand. See, when we as Christians, when we can uh, face hard circumstances and still have peace, that then others look at us and say, how can they do that? But you've got to know the Lord because it's, it's the third thing they said. It's the Lord who gives it to us. It's a peace that passes all understanding, like we said last week. And that's why I said joy and peace. They go hand in hand. They're intertwined. Now, we're going to look to um, the book of Isaiah today in, verse, in chapter 12. And we're going to look um, at this topic of joy. But let me just say, first of all, the first 11 chapters, Isaiah is denouncing 
uh, the people of Israel for their sins, the, the leaders, the government, and, and also the people. And, and he's warning them of judgment. If they don't change their ways, then judgment, the judgment of God will come upon them. But then in chapter 11, he introduces something to them. It's not just judgment and wrath. He says that a Messiah will show up one day. A Messiah will come. And then in chapter 12, the one we're going to read today, chapter 12 talks about the, the joy that we can have when that time comes. So let us hear from the Word of God this morning, uh, Isaiah chapter 12. Isaiah writes, In that day you will sing, I will praise you, O Lord. You were angry with me, but not anymore. Now you comfort me. See, God has come to save me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. The Lord God is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. And then Isaiah says, With joy you will drink deeply from the fountain of salvation. In that wonderful day you will sing the second song. You will sing, thank the Lord, praise his name, tell the nations what he has done. Let them know how mighty he is. Sing to the Lord, for he, has, for he has done wonderful things. Make known his praise around the world. Let all the people of Jerusalem shout his praise with joy. For great is the Holy One of Israel who lives among you. The word of God for the people of God this morning. Amen. Amen. Now I want to go back over this for a few minutes first and, and just kind of talk about what I, Isaiah says. He says, in that day, in other words, in the day that the Messiah comes, you will sing. This is the song. I will praise you, O Lord. I will praise you, O Lord. You will sing because you will be glad. This means that we will be happy because that the Messiah has come. And then he will say, or and then we will sing, you were angry with me, but not anymore. Okay, let's talk about this for a moment. Um, we, we tend to talk about in church, um, uh, our God is a God of love. And by the way, he is. He is the definition of love. He is he's a loving father. He, he has more love for us than we can ever have for him or for each other. He is the author of love. But we can tend to forget that our God is a God of wrath as well. I mean, if you don't believe it, just read the Old Testament. I mean, the people, they, they fell away from God and he punished them. And, and then they come back and he protect them. And it happened over and over again. And so our God is, he is a God of wrath. But now Isaiah says that the Messiah will come and we will sing, you were angry with us, but you are no more. <laughs> See, the Messiah did come. We know him to be Jesus. When he came, he took God's wrath for us. See, we're all deserving of God's wrath. We're all deserving of punishment. We're all deserving of the penalty that comes from sin because we are sinners. But this is what brings us joy. When we say Jesus died for our sins, I mean, it's very easy to say. We can say it so many times, we can forget what it means. But it means that God had a penalty for us. He had wrath, righteous wrath. And Jesus took it for us. He paid the price. He took all that wrath, all that anger that could be for humanity throughout the ages. He took it upon himself so that we would not have to endure that. Amen? That's what Jesus did. He, when we say he died for our sins, he died so that we would not be penalized for them. And that, by the way, can bring us great joy. He said, we'll sing that God was angry, but not anymore. Now he comforts us. And he'll say, we'll sing, see, God has come to save me. We need to look at this as well. Because we look at it differently in 20th, 21st century eyes. Um, when I ask you if you're saved, you're most likely going to say something like, yes, I'm going to heaven. See, we believe salvation uh, in the church anyway as as salvation of our souls. But in Isaiah's day, he was talking uh, to a people who believed they were God, who knew that they were God's children, who were told that they were his children. They didn't believe, even though he punished them at times, they didn't believe that they would be away from God 
That was all the rest of the folks out there. So they didn't need, their souls didn't need saving. So what does Isaiah mean when he says God will save me or God has saved me? He, he means salvation from oppression. Now, why might they be oppressed? They might be oppressed because of fear. They might be oppressed because of other things, but I want to talk to you about fear right now. See, um, there, was a, there was a nation called Assyria at the time. This was a huge, strong nation that was conquering and devouring smaller nations. And, and, and they lived in fear that at any time they might, Assyria might come upon them. And the, now I'm not just talking about the government, but, but all the individuals uh, who lived in towns or villages or whatever, you know, they could be afraid that the armies would come and do what armies did at that day. Maybe wipe out the village, maybe um, take them back as slaves, rape the women, do all these things that, that armies might do. And so they, were, they lived in, in a certain amount of fear. And to be quite honest, it was, it was rightly so because Assyria did come and wipe out Israel. Now, before you say, wait a minute, Israel's still here. Let me, let's go back and remember our history from, from the Old Testament. Y'all all remember Moses, right? He's the guy who looks like Charlton Heston, okay? <laughs> now, uh, <clears throat> we remember that, that uh, Moses, he, he was given the Ten Commandments. He took the, the, the Israelites out of Egypt. You know, he wandered in the wilderness. And then finally, they came to this place called uh, the promised land, the land flowing with milk, of, milk and honey, as God has said. And so they finally, they, they got there. And they had peace, and things were good. But then they started fighting with each other. And they divided into two kingdoms, Israel to the north, Judah to the south. So when I say Assyria conquered and devoured Israel, I'm talking about the northern kingdom. They would be no more. But now, Isaiah lived in Judah, but he prophesied to both kingdoms. Because God saw Judah and, and, and Israel as still being Israel. Okay? So, Judah, which is now basically Israel, Judah would be captured as well later on by the Babylonians, be taken off. But they would be able to come back, and that's why we still got Israel. Okay? So, um, they lived in fear. They were oppressed by fear, among other things, probably. But, but there's, uh, we can be oppressed today as well. It might be by fear. It might be um, by hurt or pain. Or, or there are lots of things that can oppress us, not just the oppression of sin that Jesus died for. He saves us from other oppressions as well. And he does that in this lifetime. Um, goes on, Isaiah says, The Lord God is my strength, my song, my victory. He is all these great things. And then he says this, he says, with joy, you will drink deeply. This is when the Messiah comes. With joy, you will drink deeply from the fountain of salvation. You will drink deeply from the fountain of salvation. I've looked at other um, translations and, they, and some of them say the well of salvation, it, it meaning water that comes from deep and the fountain meaning waters that flow, living waters. Okay, and so it's like a, a man or a woman who is dying of thirst. You will be satisfied as if you had all the water that you would need. Jesus makes a very similar metaphor in the Gospel of John. He says, come to me, those who are thirsty, drink from me, basically. And he says, you will never thirst again. You will be satisfied. So those of us, those of the people of Israel, those of us today, when we are oppressed by whatever it is, we can drink from the fountain or the well of salvation. We can come and drink of Jesus and never be thirsty again. Be satisfied, be filled. And I will just paraphrase the last part of it because he's basically saying this second song, what he says is um, praise the Lord, praise, you know, tell the nations to praise him. You know, Jerusalem, praise him, um, praise him with joy. And then he finally says, for great is the Holy One of Israel who lives among you okay the holy one of israel lives among you now we go back to the old testament and god you know he 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 was among the people in that he was with moses he spoke to moses he was with joshua he there was this uh, you know he he led the people with fire in the sky and everything and, and so he was with them then when jesus 
came. He was with them in human form. Okay, God was with them walking on the earth with the people. And then as Jesus left, as he was then, he is now with us, among us, through the Holy Spirit. So he's never left us. He's always been with us. But, but Isaiah is saying all of this about the Messiah. When he comes, praise him, and you're praising the one who lives among you, among us. This is a, well, actually two songs. He, he stops and, sing, and says, sing another song. And he says, these songs are songs of joy, okay? And, and he wanted the people to know that when the Messiah came, they would have joy. And today, we can have that joy because the Messiah has come. We know that Messiah to be Jesus. We know that Jesus died for our sins. We know that he has a peace that passes all our understanding. We know that peace and joy are intertwined, and we can have that joy. Now today, as I look out among all your, again, smiling faces, I know, or I hope anyway, that all of you have this joy. I hope that you are tickled pink to be here today, thrilled to have this technology that you can watch today, even if you do have to watch me. I, am, I, I hope that everyone here is filled with that peace and filled with the, with the love and, and, and excitement of Christmas. And I hope that that joy is just overflowing and bubbling up out of you. If it is, praise God. Thank him for all that he is doing. I also know that there might be some folks in here that, that joy is starting to, to creep out. You know, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, and you see the light. I mean, it's been a bad year. We all know that. And there's a light at the end of the tunnel, but the, the, the light may be seeming to get smaller. And maybe it feels like the joy is being drained from you. Maybe it's from, you know, uh, the, the, the uh, pandemic. Maybe it's, you know, something that's happened in your life. Uh, maybe there's some things going on right now. And it's just, it's, it's eating at you. And, and, and maybe even it's starting to tip you over over the ledge. You know, one more bad thing happens, and you might just go over. One more bit of bad news, and you might not know what's going to happen. One more person gets angry, and you might just lose it. You know? Maybe, maybe it's just starting, and maybe it's one more thing, and you're going to lose that joy. And, 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 it's, and you're struggling right now. I don't know. Maybe, maybe somebody either out here or out there is at that point. Well, what I say to you is, if you haven't lost the joy completely yet, pray, ask for that strength, ask God, drink from that uh, fountain of salvation, speak out, cry out to Jesus to be filled again. Uh, 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 not just, at, you know, it's kind of like a, uh, in your car, you got your gas gauge, your fuel gauge, and, and maybe at some times you're on full, maybe you're starting to creep down, ask him to fill you back up again, okay? But now, there's also maybe someone in here, and I felt that God was asking me or telling me to, to speak to not today because there may be somebody who has lost their joy this year. Again, here or out there, there may be somebody or maybe even some people. I hope not. But maybe your joy is gone. You've looked out and the, and the light through the tunnel has just seemed to disappear because you just can't see it anymore. There's struggles in your life. Maybe the years gotten the best of you. Maybe things have happened this year that don't normally happen. Maybe maybe you've heard bad news after bad news. Maybe maybe there's health problems or health issues with you or with, with a loved one. Who knows? Maybe you have lost a loved one. Maybe you're afraid of COVID or you know, you're know you afraid that a loved one won't get it. And you just seem, you feel like you can't take it anymore. I know what that's like, y'all. I've told y'all before, if you weren't here when I told you, I deal with depression. I'm real good now because of the meds I'm on, but, but I deal with depression. I've dealt with it for a long time and, and, and I've been there at that place. Now, normally my depression's irrational. But yours may be rational. 
I know how it feels to be at the bottom or feel that you're on the bottom. So a lot of times you know where you're in that things aren't as bad as you feel, but you still feel it. Maybe you've lost that joy today. Now, what I'm not going to do is, is you know, um, just give you some advice and say, just suck it up. Or I'm not going to say, hey, if you just have more faith or, or, or hey, God's there. He's going to take care of you, all that kind of stuff. Because even though that's true, that's not what you need to hear today. If you've lost your joy, you don't need to hear what's going on. You need to experience it. You need to feel God's presence again. So I'm not going to give you any platitudes. Maybe, maybe what's going to happen, God will simply make that grief that you're experiencing bearable again. Maybe, maybe you know, when you feel like it's just getting worse and worse, maybe you'll look back in a year and say, hey, I thought I was at my worst, but you know what? I got through it. So look back. Maybe you're not in that place right now, but maybe you need to hear this from maybe next year or the next year when, when things get worse for you. Maybe he'll bring somebody to you. You know, he brings, uh, uh, pe we come to each other, we try to help each other out, don't we? Y'all like, y'all want to help each other out when people are down, right? I, I think of funerals. I think of funerals when, when, and visitations when people come and they visit and they, and they say all kinds of things and sometimes those things are just horrible. They don't realize it. They mean, they mean well, but we're not professional funeral goers, are we? We can say the wrong things and make things even worse by accident and maybe not even ever know it. But maybe God's, God's going to bring you someone who you know who knows what you're dealing with, who understands, and you can talk to him. Or maybe, you know, our God's still a God of miracles. Y'all believe that? He's still a God of miracles. Maybe he'll perform a miracle in your life. When you're, you know, if, if you go to him, maybe there's a miracle that, that he's waiting for, for, to perform. Because believe it or not, if you're in that point, and it may seem like God's not there, Jesus is not hiding. Jesus is there and he's listening maybe he'll answer with a miracle there's a story that's credited to dr james dobson um i assume it is that's correct and it's about a lady named stella thornhope i like that name though it's kind of like an oxymoron thorn and hope you know but but her name's stella thornhope hope thornhope and and there was this year that she lost her husband a few months. It was Christmas time, and she lost her husband a few months before. And um, he had been battling a long battle with cancer. And her mood was about as dark as the skies were outside. It was a dreary, gray day. You know, when you look out and it doesn't look white or blue, you know, the sun's not shining, it just looks gray. You know what I'm talking about. Her, that's what her mood was like. And, and, and she had decided, I'm not celebrating. I don't know if her family was around or friends were around, but she just said, you know, I'm not putting up a tree. I'm not putting up any lights. It's just she was not in any kind of mood for Christmas. She had lost her joy completely. She was just there. And then one day, a, a knock came on her door, and, and she opened the door, and there was a courier there with a big old box, and she left, asked her to come in because it's cold outside. And, he asked her to sign for it. She asked, okay. She signed and said, who's this from and what is it? And he handed her a letter and said, everything should be explained in here. And then he leaves. So she opens the letter and she starts reading. And it's from her husband. He wrote that this was the last Christmas present that he'd be able to give her. And he knew she'd be lonely. And so she looked inside and it was a puppy. Most... A, a, a beautiful, um, I forgot what kind of puppy it was, <laughs> but it was a beautiful puppy. Um, and, and, and when she picked it up, she put it on the ground and, and, and she started reading again. And, and he admonished her, saying, You know, hey, he loved her so much, don't be sad. He knew where he was, he knew he'd be in, in uh, heaven and he knew she was coming and he was going to wait for her and not to be upset, not to be sad and about the time as the tears are falling she feels this puppy 
you know, nudging up against her, and she picks the puppy up, and he starts licking her, and, and for the very first time in months, a smile creeps over her face, and, and the depression and, the, and the, the lack of joy starts turning into joy. She's not, remember, joy is not necessarily happiness, but it's a peace about you, and she starts to smile, and there's that joy that starts coming to her, and she looks at the puppy and says, look, downstairs in the basement, there is a small tree and some twinkling lights. I think you're going to like those. And she goes and gets them. God did something miraculous in her life that time. And he can do the same thing for us when we are down, when we are depressed. Whether, whether it's just you're losing it or whether you've completely lost that joy. He can do great things. And I'm going to tell you what, the devil tries to steal our joy. But when we look to him, we, he can't steal that joy. When we, when we drink from that fountain of salvation, not just the salvation of, the, of our souls, but the salvation from oppression, of fear, of doubt, of hurt, when, when we will look to him, drink from Jesus, we can find that. And even when it feels like we'll never see it, God is still at work in our lives. You may not believe that at the time that you're at your lowest, but it's still a fact. I'm not going to tell you everything's going to be okay, but I will, but I do know that it will be okay because God is still with us. There are people today, and I hope, I hope you are one of those. And, and the people today with, with, with joy, you're looking forward to Christmas. Christmas is going to be different this year, but you can't wait. Um, we had, you know, had a lady at, at Baker's Chapel. She talked about her grandkids coming already. You know, you're going to have grandkids come. And she said it was great having them. It was also great having them leave. So, you know, that'll be the same thing for you at Christmas, maybe. Um, you'll enjoy all that food. That, well, that's me, but maybe you will too. Uh, you know, enjoy having family. And, and, and maybe, maybe I hope that you will have the joy, the peace, the hope, all those things that come because of what we celebrate at Christmas. And, and, and maybe there's some of you who are not, who are, who are, who are not, don't have as much joy, or maybe completely lost your joy. My prayer is that you receive that with the gift that comes at Christmas, the gift of Jesus. For he is the one who restores our joy. Amen. The altar is open every Sunday, but, but look, if there is something still in your joy today, don't be afraid to come forward. The, the altar is open. If, if, if you just need to talk to God for a little bit, come and speak to him.
forget. The ushers will dismiss you by rose. Now, may God bless you. May he keep you. May he bring you joy. In you. And as we leave this place, let us share all that we receive today with all who we need. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Right there, we were able to slide on through there. <laughs>